Welcome, Welcome to, to Wake, Wake and Bake, Bake from, from San, San Diego, Diego, where sports betting meets marijuana. I'm Leaf. And I'm Low. And, and here's Chess. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's another week of cashing tickets and making some people some money. And we've got uh, Hector with Soccer Time. Hector, you ready for some soccer? Yeah, let's make some money, man. <laughs> All right, so talk to us, Hector. We're going to cover some USL championship. Yeah, I got three three games for you, and they all have playoff implications in the Western Conference. The number three seed, Colorado Springs, is going to take on the number four seed, New Mexico United. Colorado Springs is a very decent team. They had uh, some up and downs recently, but they're up there contending for the uh, top three spots. And again, they're going to be playing in front of their home crowd. New Mexico United is a very feisty team. They always give everybody they play like a hard, even no matter who they're playing, they give them a hard time. So, But I think Colorado being at home and knowing that they have to start catching up in terms of points to San Diego Loyal, who just lost the Oakland Roots at home, and also San Antonio, who's trying to run away with the first uh, seed in the Western Conference, I think they're going to respond, and I think they're going to win a close one, 2-1 to one at home. You know, it's it's funny you mentioned that because it doesn't really matter what the sport. You really do want to look at when you get to the end of the season, you got to look at the, the playoff matchings and who's in and who's out. Because, as you know, sometimes it's just hard to grind when you know that you're, you're just waiting to pack your locker up. Yeah, it's all mindset. You got to keep no matter your professionals. This is, this is a professional league. They're obviously not paid as much as Major League Soccer, but they, a lot of the players have played Major League Soccer. So it's that level of internal pride and professionalism that's got to get you through that. All right, who's next? Se- uh, second game I got for you is another one with implications. is El Paso Locomotive playing at home against Phoenix Rising. These two teams do not like each other at all. The fan bases hate each other on social media and in person when they're at the games. Uh, a lot of smack talking going on there, so... Phoenix Rice, you're not having a very good season, very inconsistent, but they still have a chance to make the playoffs. And El Paso Locomotive is trying to hold on to that final uh, number seven playoff spot. So I think this is going to be a close one. I think it's actually going to go down to the wire. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you a winner, actually. I'm going to give you a winner in terms of who to bet, uh, what to bet on, but I think it's going to end up like a 1-1 draw, and it's going to be a point for each team. Wow, there you go. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And again, and well, well, the beauty of betting draws, it, it's – Three-way wagering in soccer, you don't get ties. Ties are loses. Yeah, You lose, exactly. you get a tie. But um, what's nice about the draw, it doesn't matter whether it's 1-1 one, one or 2-2. Two, two, it doesn't matter. You just got to get them to not have to have a winner. Yeah, it just pays off the same anyway. And then I got one well, more for you well, after this. Yeah, well, let's do this. Before we get to your, to your final pick, we will tease. Uh, we'll go take a break and come back. But uh, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about the playoff schedule when we get back. You're listening to Hector. Hector, it's soccer time with Hector on Wake and Bake. It's football season, ladies and gentlemen, and Prop Swap is the best way to lock in the action right now. This time last year, Cincinnati was 300 to 1 odds. Thousands of Prop Swappers cashed in on Cincy just by buying their tickets on Prop Swap early and then flipping for a profit when Burrow and company got hot. Now is your chance to do it again. With thousands of buyers across the country, you'll always get the most amount of money for your bet on Prop Swap. So hurry to Prop Swap while it's early and grab a ticket or two. The odds are always the highest right now. It really does pay to get in early. Go to PropSwap.com or download the free Prop Swap app today. Prop Swap is where America buys and sells sports bets. If you listen to Muhammad from 151 Sports Investing, he told you how much better the odds are on prop swap than what is being offered at your local sports book. And look at me. I had UConn. I went for two. So instead of getting just one ticket with UConn in the future for the Final Four, I got two, sold one on prop swap. And when they lost, I ended up having a positive ROI on a national championship future ticket where the team lost. Only on prop swap, where a America buys and sells sports bets. Welcome back to Soccer Time with Hector. Hector, we're talking some USL Championship. Now, they play a couple games a week, so they're going to last, what, another six, seven, eight weeks, right? 
Yeah. When is the end of the regular season? October 15th is when most teams finish their regular season, depending on if they play Saturday or Sunday. But, yeah, middle of October, the regular season ends. All right, so now we've got, you know, basically uh, about six weeks, a little less than six weeks, dozen games or so, to find those opportunities you talked about in the first segment where you're looking for teams that just have no reason to play anymore. Exactly, yeah, but this this team, that uh, these teams that I'm going to give you right now at the end, uh, my third pick, they actually do have something to play for, even though one of them is not technically in the playoff picture yet, and the other one is looking forward – to uh, the U.S. Open Cup final. They're the Cinderella story that everybody's been talking about on social media, Sacramento Republic, the uh, USO championship team. They're the first USO championship team to make the U.S. Open Cup final in 14 years. And they're going to be going up against Orlando in that game. But for this game that I'm talking about right now, o- Oakland Roots, they're just coming off a big win on the road against San Diego Loyal on Wednesday. 3-1, uh, to one, pretty convincing result. And uh, I think Oakland Roots is going to be desperate to get a win because they're trying to get into the playoffs. This is their second season in the USO Championship. And I'm not saying that Sacramento is going to be looking ahead of them to the US Open Cup final, but Sacramento really hasn't been that consistent either, per se, even though they're in the five spot right now. I think that being this uh, Northern California rivalry game, Oakland against Sacramento, both teams are going to give it their all. Their all. And uh, I think Oakland is going to surprise Sacramento. Hopefully they're not, like I said, too focused on what's coming up in the US Open Cup, but they're a solid team. They're playing right. They played great against San Diego Loyal, and I think they're going to pull off the upset at Sacramento in a high-scoring match, 3-2. to two. Well, yeah, if you look at the USL Championship standings right now, you know, San Antonio is five ahead of San Diego, who's seven ahead of Colorado, but they're only three ahead of New Mexico, and then Sacramento, Las Vegas, El Paso, LA Galaxy, Oakland Roots, it's anybody's game for those last two spots for those, because they're four points apart and there's a lot of games left yeah and if you sneak in it's like any sport if you sneak in healthy and you sneak in playing your best you never know you can make it all the way kind of like Steelers and the Super Bowl and all that stuff well look at last year remember the first week of the USL championship the team that was the top seed got COVID and couldn't play right or look at baseball too the Atlanta Braves won the World Series and they snuck into the playoffs playing one of their yep. best you know so yep. yeah all right Hector soccer time's great as always we'll talk to you again next week Take it easy. CFL, let them know. Welcome to Saturdays in Canada with Black Hawk West. Now, this is a unique Saturday weekend for us here on Saturdays in Canada, isn't it, Wes? Yeah, normally we get we get two games on Saturdays, and it looks like our two games happened yesterday. And we had we had a great one on Thursday night. Two two great teams. You know, I always thought it was unfair Calgary and Winnipeg playing in the same division because they they are just consistently you know two of the best. But but yeah, this Saturday is a little unique. We only get one CFL game, and uh, you know we got week zero of college, so. So we, we got a day full of football. There's no short. Oh, yeah. Week zero is going to be good. Now, just in case you're wondering, as we speak, Blackhawk, Wes and I, on Saturdays in Canada, it is 420 in Honolulu. 420 in Honolulu. So I would imagine the, the with the weather in Honolulu, they probably have some really nice home gardens. So hopefully they're enjoying as well. I would imagine that uh, if you can't grow marijuana or cannabis on Honolulu, you probably just you probably shouldn't try to grow anything, right? I I would imagine. I mean, and and the crops of all sorts are pretty well protected in in can in uh, Hawaii. No doubt about it. All right, so let's talk about. Let's start with. Let's start with the kids in the morning because this is a unique situation. Like we said, Saturdays in Canada is going to be going on for a while, but we're not going to have too many with just one game. So let's talk about the week zero, what you see with college football. Then when we come back from break, what we'll do is we'll we'll give out a winner for the CFL. Yeah, you know, week zero uh, is, is entertaining. And they normally throw a couple big name teams in there. And, you know, I, I try and pick a couple of years ago, uh, 2020, we, we found a team named Coastal Carolina who covered every single point spread that they touched 
it was one of the greatest finds. And I'm not naive enough to think that I, I discovered that university, but we started playing them in week zero. And, and they were exciting to us and they covered a spread and they kept covering spreads. And, and then, you know, halfway through the season, there was that big BYU game. And so week zero is really cool because there's teams like that. So, you know, the, the marquee matchup, I guess you could say, of week zero is really the Nebraska and, and Northwestern game. But, you know, the game that's really got my attention is, uh, is North Texas. I am looking at I'm looking at North Texas against uh, UTEP, University of Texas El Paso. That's that's later on tonight. Uh, it is it, it's an 8 p.m. Central kickoff. It's a one point spread. North Texas has a really fantastic rush attack they have for years, and I, I don't see that changing at this point. Neither team is really great on defense. Uh, UTEP has a, a fairly decent pass attack, but I don't think that they're going to get to use it. I think that that uh, North Texas is going to win this game. Uh, it might go back and forth for a little bit, but they really have a great rush attack to slow down what we can call decent, at least a, a decent week zero uh, passing attack of UTEP. So I really like North Texas. Uh, all we're doing is laying a point or or taking a point, depending on where you look at it, it's pretty much a pick em. Yeah, remember, they finished the season covering the spread in eight of nine. How do you not like following a team – opening the next season after they finish with all W's in the against the spread column. Yeah. And, and it could be one of those cool teams where they cover for us every week and nobody's really thinking about it because everybody's looking at, you know, the Bama LSU game. Yeah. And those are the, the, the little sneakers. You got to get those sneakers in those little teams that the uh, cash tickets, so then, you know, the tickets cash the same when they say N O Texas as they do when they say Texas, even though actually if you have Texas, you don't cash as many tickets. <laughs> That's true too. All right. When we come back for break, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hop into to Canada. Hey, eh? you're listening to Saturdays hey. in Canada with Black Hawk West here on Wake and Bake. You can get championship footballs at championshipfootballs.com. They offer a one. 100% money back guarantee on every single souvenir football that they sell. It's the coolest present that they'll open that day guaranteed. There's nothing worse than trying to find the right gift for somebody that already has everything. Whether that special present is for a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan or an Alabama Crimson Tide backer, maybe Gramps a lifelong Dallas Cowboys supporter or your brother-in-law is an LSU Tiger territory. No one member of the Baylor Alumni Association, is there a better Father's Day gift for someone who's a Kansas City Chiefs fan? Send them the coolest present they'll open that day, guaranteed. Now, if your favorite pro team is the Buffalo Bills or those Minnesota Vikings, well, we're sorry about that. Also, if you're a New Mexico State Aggie or a Tulane Green Wave alum, not much they can do. After all, the name isn't nice effort. You had a pretty good season. Footballs.com. The name Name is championshipfootballs.com. The coolest president they'll open that day guaranteed. Welcome back to Saturdays in Canada with Black Hawk West here on Wake and Bake. West, there's only one game Saturday, but guess what? Uh, we cashed 10 tickets on a game recently. Yeah, we, we did. And this game, this game is not the most exciting matchup. It is it is the two worst records in the CFL. And uh, you know, I, I do like this game. Whether it was the only game or not, I this this game was getting a hard look because I I think Ottawa their their roster and and their capability is not reflecting in their record. Preseason, I thought Ottawa had a shot to get in the Grey Cup. I think they've probably about two losses away from being eliminated from the playoffs. But Edmonton is dead last in points points allowed. Pretty, it, pretty much anything significant. Um, Edmonton won last week. I don't think they are able to put two wins in a row. Uh, also, Ottawa is going to be starting Arbuckle versus bringing him in. Uh, that that's that's a huge decision. Caleb Evans had been really struggling uh, at at quarterback. You know, he's getting a lot of rush yards for them. That's not really moving the ball down the field. So I, I like the move to Arbuckle, and you know Ottawa coming off of a thirty to twelve loss. Last week against Edmonton, Edmonton is not 30 points good. They're not holding somebody to 12 points good. And uh, I I absolutely love uh, taking the points and even a little dabble on the money line on Ottawa. 
Yeah, you know, when you're dealing with teams that both have poor records, you have to look beyond that, right, Wes? That record's not helping you in making a decision there. The, the record doesn't help, and you got to read between the lines, and it's about the number. The only number that matters is the number that has to do with the points and the math at, on the scoreboard at the end of the game. That's the number that matters. The record does not matter to me as far as placing a wager goes because anybody could win. These guys on the field, they don't. They don't care if they're dead last or not. I mean, some of them might, but no, they're playing. They're they're playing for a W. And you know, it's funny because you you mentioned the a quarterback run, and you know, that's it's that's an awful big field. You're scrambling is going to get you some progress if you're throwing a ball, but if you once you cross the line of scrimmage in the CFL, there's too much field and too many people out there to to, to make. You don't see very many long quarterback runs. Yeah, and and Ottawa is just. They've been such a mess injury-wise on quarter end. They, they're supposed to have Jeremiah Masoli to start the season. He, he's a great a, – a back-to-back great cup quarterback that was supposed to go to Ottawa uh, who got injured. And and now, you know, they, they've been as low as QB4, QB3, and now they're just rotating them through. And and it it's unfortunate because Ottawa got really aggressive. They got aggressive in the offseason. Like, I have almost never seen that type of aggression – as far as player acquisitions and moves to improve the roster. So I, right. I well, one, one, thing, one thing I'm going to add, and then we're going to let you go because your, your future Ohio state quarterback is calling you to the, uh, to the uh, film room. I think he wants to look at some more film, uh, but yeah. uh, going forward. Now we're going to have over the next two, three weeks, teams that are eliminated. And it'll be interesting to see how we could find betting against some teams that have no heart. Yep. I agree. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you next time. It's Saturdays in Canada with Blackhawk West here on Wake and Bake. I want some more. I want some more. I want some more. Welcome to More Winners with Mo from the Mo Radio Show. Mo, you know what? You had some success again last week, and, and these practice games, preseason, whatever you want to call them, the make-believe games, they're a little more challenging, so you have to look at things a little differently. So let's do this. Let's start with the whole world of preseason, and then after we take a break, we'll come back, and we're going to talk some games Saturday that actually count because it is college football, and it starts. So uh, what do you think? How's that sound? Sounds great to me, man. I'm ready for football. Yeah, you know what? The rest of the year kind of pales in comparison to football season. There's no doubt about it. And you notice it with, with a lot of things, not just sports betting in, in general with cities, especially if their baseball team's out of it this time of year and they have any hope of their football team, they're going to slide right over to there. So let's uh, give me a game. Which game did you want to talk about for preseason? Uh, why don't we do uh, the Colts and, and the Buccaneers Saturday night? Is Brady back from his uh, personal leave? You mean back from filming The Masked Singer? Uh, yes, he is. He, he will actually be playing in this game where a lot of these starters won't be getting a lot of time. He's going to start the game uh, Saturday night in Indianapolis. So – you're right. You've got to kind of try to figure out your strategy when it comes to these practice games. And uh, I'm going to be honest, man, the Colts haven't looked great. Their uh, second and third teamers have gotten waxed in these last couple of games with Tom starting the game. Uh, I, I like <laughs> the Buccaneers in this game. Uh, I think their backups are more talented. Uh, Tom starting the game isn't going to be good for the Colts. Uh, he's going to be looking to knock some rust off and impress. So uh, I'm, I'm taking the Buccaneers to outright win this football game. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think uh, he, the Colts have some things to figure out for sure. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem like it's really fair that he's still doing what he's doing, you know? No, it, it's terrible that he's still doing what he's doing, that he looks that good and his wife's that hot. It's Some things just are not fair. Yeah, and, and I wonder if, you know, down the road, you know, we're going to see where, you know, he, he did what he signed one of those Shrek contracts, you know? <laughs> he signed one of those Shrek con- contracts. It, it sure worked out for him, didn't it? 
Beautifully, beautifully. All right, so let's do this. Let's look at another pro game. Let's uh, go to the Detroit Lions. You really are high on the Lions this year. Well, I'll tell you what. In two weeks, they've won me money. Uh, You know, and sometimes – You've got to be careful, as we always talk about, not to get emotionally involved. But, man, watching Hard Knocks on HBO and they're they're with the Detroit Lions now and watching Dan Campbell, their coach, that dude gets me fired up each and every Tuesday night when I watch it. So uh, what I like about, though, Chaz, is that – and what's made me pick him early on is that the guys buy into what he's saying and they play hard for him. And they play hard for him for 60 minutes and that's been the difference in these games uh them closing them out and so i like the lions again and i'm taking them again i'm going to keep riding that horse till it bucks me i'm taking the lions uh, again this week yeah one of the things that we talk about with our easy sports data is when you find teams that are just doing what they're doing and they're winning uh, you gotta love when you're getting three or four or five points because they're playing they're playing a different level of football only because they have no choice. I mean, this is a team that stunk for a long, long time. They 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 made that trade. He quarterback played him pretty good, right? Yeah, I mean, Jared Goff has looked good. Uh, you had Amos uh, St. Brown, uh, who you know came on at the end of the year last year and has become their number one guy. Uh, they've got a decent core of running backs, but you know, Aiden Hutchinson on the defense uh, makes that defense go. They've got another uh, rookie uh, linebacker who's probably going to make the starting lineup that they effectively call Rodrigo, even though it has nothing to do with his name. Uh, and they've got some guys out there, man, that are hungry, they're young, and uh, they want uh, they want to grab their playing time. Uh, but like I said, you know, from guy one to guy 73, they're all out there playing their hearts out for that guy. And that's all you can ask from a team uh, that's been so bad for so long. So I'm going to ride this train again this week and, and go with the Detroit Lions. Yeah, nothing wrong with riding a winner. All right, when we get back, we're going to talk some college football. It's week zero. You're listening to more winners with Mo from the Mo Radio Show here on Wake and Bake. It's football season, ladies and gentlemen, and Prop Swap is the best way to lock in the action right now. This time last year, Cincinnati was 300 to 1 odds. Thousands of Prop Swappers cashed in on Cincy just by buying their tickets on Prop Swap early and then flipping for a profit when Burrow and company got hot. Now is your chance to do it again. With thousands of buyers across the country, you'll always get the most amount of money for your bet on Prop Swap. So hurry to Prop Swap while it's early and grab a ticket or two. The odds are always the highest right now. It really does pay to get in early. Go to PropSwap.com or download the free Prop Swap app today. Prop Swap is where America buys and sells sports bets. If you listen to Muhammad from 151 Sports Investing, he told you how much better the odds are on prop swap than what is being offered at your local sports book. And look at me. I had UConn. I went for two. So instead of getting just one ticket with UConn in the future for the Final Four, I got two, sold one on prop swap. And when they lost, I ended up having a positive ROI on a national championship future ticket where the team lost. Only on prop swap, where a America buys and sells sports bets. Welcome back to more winners with Mo from the Mo Radio Show here on Wake and Bake. You know what I haven't done today yet, Mo, and I, and I will do it uh, later on. I'm going to be talking to uh, to Mohammed. We're going to do some geography because it's 20 after the hour, and some, that means somewhere it's 4:20, and we're going to find out where it's 4:20 in the morning and where it's 4:20 at night. By the end of this season, we will have cashed a lot of football tickets. And we will know pretty much the entire timeline of 420s all around the world. But let's talk about Saturday morning. It's going to roll around here, 9 o'clock where I live, 12 o'clock Eastern time, noon. College football starts for real. Before we uh, we look at a game, talk to me about what you, you think is going to happen this year. College football is changing so dramatically with the NIL deals and, and the conferences just being blown up. I, I'm not sure if it's going to be good or bad, but like most things in life, you really can't tell until you get to where you're going. Well, this may be one of the last years that we see, uh, you know, the last couple of years we see college football the way we know it, because I really believe these power five conferences may 
uh, be run by the college football playoff in a couple years as they move away from the NCAA. Uh, that deal, current deal, ends, I believe, in 2025. So uh, we may be enjoying the last couple seasons of college football as we've known it uh, as things continue to change uh, with all the money that's being pumped in there. Uh, and, you know, you've got to look at, at a conference like the Big Ten that, uh, you know, is going to make their be the first conference to make their mark coast to coast. One of the things when you mentioned the Big Ten that I, I'm looking at is down the road, they have to expand the playoffs because if you have more games, you make more money. It just seems like it should have happened already. Is that a, a done deal, do you think? Yeah, uh, I don't think they can change it to the to the contracts, up, but I would assume so because those big games, like you said, make more money, uh, and it, it's gonna. It, it, I mean, it's bound to happen because. But there's always, no matter how many teams you add, there's always gonna be that conversation that somebody got snubbed or somebody got left out because it's 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 the nature of the beast. But I hope they don't go too many. I mean, I, six or eight would be my max. Yeah, you know what? It's it, you know if you're doing six, somebody's getting a buy. If you're making everybody play eight eight would work and i don't really think you know uh, the the difference between one two and three in most final college football polls and eight nine and ten in that same poll are they're they're not close together usually no and you know you you may get to see some you know you usually see uh the Big Ten and the uh, SEC dominate that, so maybe you'll see some teams, uh, you know, from the Big Twelve, and maybe finally a Pac-12 team, uh, you know, get in there. But uh, and I think that's the biggest reason for it is to expand and get some more of the conferences involved in it. No doubt about it. All right, let's talk about this game. It's over in Ireland, right? It's Nebraska and Northwest, and I don't know how how many years they had this plan, but you don't know, just decide in the spring let's play in Ireland. So this game's got a lot of a lot of effort behind it. Yeah, and uh, if you get a chance, go on uh, Twitter and check out Northwestern's new helmets for this game. They're pretty cool. Uh, you know, this game, Pat Fitzgerald has been uh, at, at Northwestern for a long time, their head coach. Uh, and it's another situation kind of like, uh, you know, Dan Campbell from the Lions. These guys play hard for him every single year. Uh, Scott Frost, who had all success at Central Florida, came back to his alma mater in Nebraska, uh, is on the hot seat reportedly this year. Uh, things have not gone well at the uh, once powerhouse Nebraska. Uh, so this is definitely um, every game this year for him is going to be must win, but I don't know that Nebraska can hang with the talent that Northwestern continues to put on this football field. Uh, they're very good at defense. They move the ball very well. They try to limit their turnovers. Uh, I like Northwestern in this game. It's hard whenever you make this long travel across the ocean, but I, I think that uh, with, with all the, uh, controversy surrounding their head coach that uh, Northwestern is going to have the uh, edge in this game. Yeah, I would imagine that Scott Frost would have bet a lot of chips on that he was going to have instant success there. Wouldn't you think the way he, he turned UCF around? Well, I and, mean, yeah, you look you look at a team there that, in all honesty, if people were rating these things correctly, probably should have been the number one or number two team and been playing for a college football championship because what he did down there was, uh, was amazing and big-time programs didn't want to play him. Yeah, you're right. And then, and then to say he's on the hot seat, I mean, he probably should have got fired last year. Yeah, if he had not been, uh, if they're not paying him a so much that they paid him, and have been uh, that been his alma mater, he probably would have been bounced already. But uh, you know, this year he may not survive through the season. No doubt. All right, so when we come back next week, bro, we got a full full slate. The Tom Brady could rest the week after his game, but we'll have a full, full slate of Labor Day football. We'll talk to you then. All right, bud. It was Mo from the Mo Radio Show here on More Winners on Wake and Bake, but we'll be right back. Sports Betting Weekly. All I do is win, win, win. No matter what, I got money on my mind. I can never. It's Sports Betting Weekly on Wake and Bake, and we're joined with Muhammad from 151 Sports. And Muhammad, I laugh because we talked about. The season tickets, you know, at Arrowhead that you guys have, because you and Les are, are 
or Chiefs uh, diehards and fans and, and t- uh, season ticket holders. And you're in Section 114. And I know my son, uh, I don't know if you met Chaz when he was there. Oh, no, you, so you sold your tickets that game. I remember mm-hmm. you were saying this. But so my son's met Wes. I still haven't met Wes. But we'll get to it. We offered, uh, as you all are offered, invites to our Vegas uh, trip every year. Now, this year will be the first year that uh, I'm not allowed to to not remember because I have health conditions now. <laughs> and I could end up dead. <laughs> or in a hospital, worst case scenario. But last year was pretty special because, I mean, it was just remember. a good weekend. And, and cannabis was a big part of it. Cannabis was a, a big, big part of it. And uh, so I was laughing because it, it's, you were saying 114 in my mind. I was I was writing 420. If you were in section 420 <laughs> at Arrowhead, you know, I don't know if there is a 420. It seems like we'd be pretty high up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so, yeah, so let's do this. Let's talk a little bit, a bit about uh, how exciting you are for Saturday morning, and that is what Wake and Bake is all about. Wake and Bake is the fact that we're in San Diego, and these games hit you early in the morning, and if you're going to get up and do a show, which we do at 8 o'clock, we do a show, 9 o'clock the games start, you know what, the coffee is just only going to get you so far, Muhammad, you know what I mean? It only gets you so far, but college football's back. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. It's college football, week zero. Yeah, and and you're from the you know, 16-hour day college football family. So, you know, we, we have that uh, that genetic line, which is, you know what? There's a game on, and it's Stanford at Cal, and it's the second half, and I have action, and it's, you know, 10.30 where I live. It's yeah. 12, it's, that's the next – it's Sunday where you live. Yeah. And that's really, I think, you know, that's the other aspect. By Sunday – I am fried. People say, you know what? You, you don't seem to watch much pro football. Now, I don't watch much pro football during college football season yeah. because I give it 16 hours of my life. Now, I, I'm multi-tax, but it's getting 16 hours of my life on Saturday. So by Sunday, I'm, I'm pretty fried. But, but college ends early, you know? Thanksgiving, yeah. college is over. And then the pros are, are, are everything. So Full gear. Yep. All right, so let's look at this. We've got, uh, you know, it's, it's week zero, so... They call it week zero because technically uh, the games start, they play Saturday. I don't think there's any Sunday, right? It's all Saturday. I think it's all Saturday. Yeah, one late game in Hawaii, of course. Well, that, that, that's another one. That's the, that even makes the Cal Stanford reference, right? It's three yeah, hours yeah. after that. And I do. I have stories of, of having to call the score phone. I'm old enough that there was a score phone, guys, and it changed every 20 minutes. And that's how you found out the score in Hawaii game. And you might be watching whatever late movie's on in your bedroom. And every 20 minutes, you pick it up <laughs> to see the call. There was no internet, you know? So, uh, so yeah, and... Uh, and then uh, it starts at 9 o'clock, Austin P. at Western Kentucky. There looks to be two, four, six, eight, ten, about 10 games. And then Thursday, of course, week one starts. Mm-hmm. So they kind of put this as week zero. For our Easy Sports database, Muhammad, we do treat this as a separate week. So talk to us. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to start right off with Northwestern and Nebraska. And that one is actually in Dublin, Ireland. So uh, a lot of things go into that one, but... The biggest factor in that, when especially any of these overseas games, um, week zero more than any, but especially when they're playing in Ireland, it's coaching. Coaching is a huge, it's a huge, huge factor. And I mean, in my opinion, I think Pat Fitzgerald is better than Scott Frost, and that's just my opinion. I think Northwestern is a better, well-coached team, even though they're a large dog at eleven and a half. Uh, I, I'm running with Northwestern on this one, and I, I want to emphasize this: if this was home. Um, whether it's in Northwestern or Nebraska, I don't know that I would play the game. Not to say that I wouldn't take what Northwestern, but I would probably walk away from that one. I think the coaching disadvantage is what you know makes this one so appealing for me. Well, you know what's so funny is when he came back, Scott Frost, I think we talked about this with, with Wes. When he came back, it really was – he would have bet all the money you're paying me that I'm going to be successful. Mm-hmm. He would have. Yeah. I guarantee you that. He would have lost it all, but he would have had it all. It. And, and the bottom line is, uh, yeah, he's got to win early. He'll be gone. By, if, if they start slow, he'll be gone because they want to get rid of him last year, but they couldn't because he's Scott Frost, and he's got a ring for them, right? Yep, yep. They, but yeah. I'm telling you, they're not patient's program. It's not a patient program at all. No. No doubt. No. But you got to be patient because we'll be right back. You're listening to Sports Betting Weekly with Muhammad from 151 Sports Investing here on Wake and Bake and Wake and Bake is relative today.
You can get championship footballs at championshipfootballs.com. They offer a 100% money back guarantee on every single souvenir football that they sell. It's the coolest present that they'll open that day guaranteed. There's nothing worse than trying to find the right gift for somebody that already has everything. Whether that special present is for a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan or an Alabama Crimson Tide backer, maybe Gramps a lifelong Dallas Cowboys supporter or your brother-in-law is in LSU Tiger territory. Know a member of the Baylor Alumni Association? Is there a better Father's Day gift for someone who's a Kansas City Chiefs fan? Send them the coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. Now if your favorite pro team is the Buffalo Bills or those Minnesota Vikings, well we're sorry about that. Also if you're a New Mexico State Aggie or a Tulane Green Wave alum, not much they can do. After all, the name isn't nice effort. You had a pretty good season. Footballs.com. The name is championshipfootballs.com. The coolest present they'll open that day guaranteed. Uh, we are back. It's Sports Betting Weekly. It's on Wake and Bake. Again, it's relative. We talked about it, Mohammed. The, the fact that coffee will get you so far. I, I, coffee is really more of the physical uh, in me. This is just me, and I am not a doctor. I, I am not a, 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 a do not have a PhD in cannabis. I'm just saying, coffee seems to be getting like the body going for me, and the cannabis gets the head going. But when you're doing a show, it's from eight to nine in the morning, and then the games start at nine, and they're going to go all the way to the Hawaii game. That's one long ass day. If you take a nap during college football Saturday, you lose betting opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. You cannot sleep. You cannot sleep. Sleep's for the week. Sleep is for the week. How about winners for the week? What do we got for uh, this week zero? Yeah, so um, the other play I've got is Northwest – or not Northwest, in Illinois against Wyoming. Um, the spread is at minus 12 and a half. There's two things I want to note here. A, Illinois was one game shy of making a bowl last year. And B, Wyoming has yet to announce their starting quarterback. Like, and, You know, that – that in itself tells me that they're not sure of themselves. Also, toppled with Illinois coming second year with their head coach. Um, they started off a little bit weak, ended up really good at, towards the end of the year. But I, I'm, I'm taking Illinois minus 12 and a half here. This is Illinois and this is Wyoming. I mean, they don't the, – the competition could not be farther apart. And it's only going to get wider, right, as this yeah. world changes of college football. But Wyoming had Josh Allen, and, and Josh Allen was great. And I don't think they won every game. I think they still lost a game or two, if I remember correctly. Yep. So, so yeah, I, I, I do like the – I like the – hey, they're getting a check. I want my money too. I'm betting against this big underdog that's traveling because that's why they're traveling. They're traveling because if you don't know this, we're going to just give you a quick update. If I play at your house, I make more money than if I play at my house. If I play at your house, it's not as nice. It's tend to be <laughs> hostile, but I make yep. more money. I make more money. That's all. That's how I pay for the girls' volleyball, the, the men's golf, and those kind of things. So that's what they do, and I love those opportunities. I got a third one. Yep. So I've got I'm North Texas. Um, they are a one and a half favorite. The biggest thing I want to note here is they started off super slow last year. They started off one and six. Um, however, they won, ended up winning five straight, and that was how they made their. Um, that's how they made the uh, bowl game the fall of that same season. So to start off, you know, slow. That tells me, okay, great, we're building together. Um, it's not a new head coach. He's been with them, I want to say, seven years. Um, but the Miners are, are not that good of a team. It's not. It's one of those things where I don't understand why Vegas is coming with one and a half. But uh, North Texas is an easy one. I'm taking it any day of the week. They finish you know, strong. You know, so funny. Good. Yeah, we talk about that all that all the time. Saturday morning when you wake up, this line confuses you. Saturday night when you go to bed, you totally understand what happened. Because in hindsight, the line totally makes sense, but not in, in foresight. You mentioned something I got to jump on because that's something that I do when I look at our easy sports data. Um, I look at what happened. Like right now, I'm going back for these teams, and I'm looking at what happened the last two years at home and last two years on the road, 
last two times on the road, which will be three years, their very first game, especially this when you get these teams that are traveling. And you'll see, you know, they were getting 36 points. They were getting 38 points. They were getting 53 points. It's the only data on the spreadsheet, Mohammed, because it's the only yeah. games they ever have point spreads on for these teams. Mm-hmm. And every single one's uh, an L. And an O, usually an L and an O. They, they and lose low. and that goes over. All right, Betty, it's uh, week zero. We're excited. Hey, we're going to be doing this a lot. Uh, eventually, we'll be doing it on uh, Thursday nights as well. But for right now, it's going to be wake and bake, which means you got to get up early. But you know what? It's always 420 somewhere if it's 20 after. All right, Muhammad, yeah. we'll catch you next time. Thanks, Chaz. I'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks again for catching us on wake and bake. And you know what you should go do? Always be cashing. <laughs>